Hello, good evening, and welcome to episode um, 84 of Cobase Alpha. And um, we're in the middle of um, building a, a portfolio website using Gatsby. So um, without much uh, further ado, let's go and have a look at where we are. So up over into the coding. Here we are. In fact, let's have some music as well. I'm a bit hoarse at the moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's have some music. There we go. Okay. So let's have a quick look at what we've got so far. So I've got the site running up on uh, Netlify. Uh, we've got a custom um, domain as well, so codebasealpha.dev. And uh, let's go and have a look at what we've got so far. So um, it's a bit monochrome at the moment, but we'll maybe address that at some point. Um, so this is the home page. We've got our, um, this will be some introductory text up here. So we've got a placeholder in there currently. We've got our social media bar here with the various uh, links to um, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch and Discord. And then we've got our GitHub projects, which uh, all live on these rather neat little cards. And you see, I've gone a bit overboard on the kind of icons and things like that, but I really like them. We've got a, a link here to the um, GitHub repository and a link here to um, the YouTube playlist if there is one. So, uh, and we've got tags and all kinds of neat stuff. So there's quite a few of those as we've got quite a lot of projects up on GitHub. The other part of the uh, site that we've been working on is the blog page. And currently we've got a couple of cards that appear here which are our um they're uh, like um summary cards so um this is a uh this is a extract from the uh, the blogs so we've got one which i actually wrote a proper kind of introductory uh, blog post for and uh, a another post which is simply a lorem ipsum just so we've got two two blog posts so um what we're going to try and do today is to um, I want to put a, an image against each of these horizontal cards, so an image that lives on the side here, I think. And I think we'll probably use some little unsplash for that. We also need to make them clickable, so it takes us to the full um, blog post, and that's going to involve um, dynamically creating um, pages. And when I say dynamically creating them, I actually mean at build time, not um, not in real time. Uh, so this will be dynamically created at build time and that's the main kind of thrust of stream today. The other thing I want to do is start looking at the contact page. Currently this just goes back to the home page but we're going to have a contact form on here and we're going to, because I'm on Netlify, we're going to um, we're going to leverage the, um, the form handling capabilities of Netlify and we'll start off with a very simple um, form using the features of Netlify and maybe if we've got time or next time, we'll expand that to use um, uh, custom Ajax um, callback, uh, postback that is, and also um, my own um, my own uh, capture or recapture. And we're going to start off using the capture that's provided by uh, Netlify. Uh, the reason why I want to use my own in the end is because I can get some stats about uh, from that uh, from Google. Okay, so um, that's what we're aiming for. Um, so what have I done since the last stream? Well, um, I haven't done an awful lot, which is the kind of point of this particular project is not to do too much off stream. What I have done is I've um, I've gone onto a Netlify and I've installed the Netlify CLI. So I simply ran this command npm install Netlify hyphen CLI hyphen G, sort of a global tool. And this has given me a, a command line way of uh, doing deployments to Netlify. I'm not going to use that directly uh, at the moment. It's for some kind of future ideas. But uh, I've got that installed and up and running. So the only other thing I've done to go along with that over in our code is I've created a, um, a Netlify.toml file, which is here. So this, um, this is useful in two senses. Um, First, it lets me kind of uh, add features uh, to our build, such as using serverless functions at some point. Uh, but the other thing, it actually documents um, how I build uh, my site um, up on Netlify. And particularly, we've got a custom build command, which is this, um, we, we can do npm rebuild um, 
before we run the Gatsby build command. So that's really the kind of um, the point of this is to document that change. And also, obviously, we, we're building out of the public um, folder, which is where all our HTML files end up. That lives up here. So these are all the kind of pages that get created by the um, Gatsby build process. Okay, so that's the Tommel file. And that's all I've done, other than add an extra blog post. Um, so we're actually ready to, um, to start thinking about... Um, I think we'll start off by trying to add a, um, an image to this card. So this is the blog post summary card. Um, you can see every in blog posts that we um, reach, uh, blog posts we find using our, um, our, our um, GraphQL query here then we're creating uh, a card for it. And so currently we've got two, so we've got two cards. This is the blog post card itself. And uh, we, need to, we need to go out and, um, and look at um, Unsplash, I think, uh, to get a random, um, random image. So let's, let's start off by, I think what we'll do is go and have a look at um, Fermantic, Fermantic cards, which is what we're using. So we're using Fermantic UI for all our um, styling. It's kind of a high-level kind of styling language. So we're not, I'm not dealing um, so much in low-level CSS. We're using these um, these high-level kind of styling formats here. And we've got a card format. Um, you can see you can have an image on the card, but we've got a horizontal card for these um, for these blog post card so what I, I want like an, an image to kind of fit on the side of the card like that so let's have a look at how they've done that so they've simply added an image class so let's copy that piece of code there go over to um, Visual Studio so I'm just going to go back and have a look so it's outside the content div so let's pop that outside the content div and stick that in there. And this has got to be a class name because we're in React world here. Um, why is it complaining about that? It's saying no closing time for image okay so we just need to close that off okay like that okay so in our source here we're going to want to go out to um we're going to want to go out to um unsplash so let's have a look at unsplash and see what we can do with it. unsplash image okay let's have a look what we've got and splash sim so there's two types of um, two ways we can get the images there's a full API but I don't want to use the full API even though I've uh, actually registered as a developer on their site uh, fuel snowball welcome good to see you good evening to you um, Let's see if there's a simple API. Unsplash source, this is the one I want. Okay, so basically we can get a random um, a random image by using this. And it says we can enter dimensions after the URL. Okay, so let's just have a quick look what if we drop that into a um, so we, yeah, it gives us a random picture and it's obviously we need to control the size of it. So that's pretty much what we want. Uh, we'll alter it slightly I'll just grab this URL drop that into there and we're going to use um, we'll try 150 by 150 so I want a square image and then we're going to pop a query string on the end of that um, I wonder what the best way of doing that is going to be 
So let's go back over here. So let's do 150 by 150. Can we just put a, yeah, so I've already tested this bollock of it. Yeah, so we can just put, put a um, kind of keyword on the end of it. So that's pretty good. Okay, so let's try that out. Do want that one? On here. So uh, onto there we can append. So we can append. Uh, I think what we're going to have to do is wrap that whole thing. Like that. You probably need single quotes. And then we want um, the props. Dot. I think we got tags, haven't we? I think that's what we've got. So let's just save that. I'm just going to blog posts. I think I'm passing something called tags in. Yes, I am. So it's the front matter tags. Okay. Let's um, let's start off the app to be developed and see what happens. Seeing the top news in your tab, <laughs> Zayman Norway. Yeah. <laughs> well, interesting if you were saying we talk about coronavirus. Uh, I, I kind of watch um, live feeds from uh, Boca Chica in Texas, which is uh, where they're building um, the, the SpaceX Starship, and uh, that was full of coronavirus chat, and it was very, very annoying. So I need to spell Gatsby right, don't I? So let's start up the development of the server. So hopefully this will build okay. So first time it's going to take a little while to start up, but then we should be able to leave it running. So we haven't got a, an alt property yet, so that's fine. We, we know we need to have a, an alt property on our image. So we'll sort that out in a second, but let's go over to um, Chrome image and um, bring up localhost 8000, go to our blog post, Okay, so we've got some images, which is nice. Okay, so not quite sure what that's supposed to be. Okay, well we've got some images, so I'm not sure that they're, they're particularly um, relevant. And I think if we just refresh, it should show us a different one. Okay, that's fine. So it, it's, it makes it, the page a visually a bit more interesting, I guess, to have those images there. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep that. So that's worked quite well. That's kind of number one on my little list of things I wanted to get done. So Fuel Snowball, uh, you're part of meetings and people go off topic and try to focus on the, on the meeting and then they have five minutes early so they can rant on about coronavirus. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a pain. It really is. So far, no response on your brush. Well, yeah, it's interesting that um, I'm, I'm going to um, probably invest in that piece of software, but not quite yet. Um, I think it looks interesting what you did. And um, just the, the code you wrote for those uh, shader brushes didn't seem that complicated. It might be a subject for kind of a short stream um, or, or, or as part of a shader stream. That, that's a good idea. Okay, so we've got that um, that looking okay. So let's go and fix this problem with the alt. So we want some alt text. Uh, so we're going to say alt equals. Uh, I guess we can just put in. Um, so that's not what we want. Want it? Yeah. So alt equals. And we'll just um, tell you what, we'll put in the props tags again. That. 
So when we're here, we should get a recompile, and it's happy now, so it's, it says there's no issues with it. And um, I'm going to have to reload uh, because my hot hot reload isn't doesn't seem to be working still. So I'll still need to sit down and figure out how to do that. So Fuel Stable says he suggests a capability or capacity for coding layer effects using a shader language. Makes sense. Yes, I think it should be quite interesting to see what. Maybe is it open source that? Um, I don't say it's open source as it does cost money, but do they accept um, pull requests into the code? Because it'd be interesting for you to feed into that project. Okay, there we go. So we should have some alt text on this now. Okay, so what we kind of the big kind of push today is going to try to get these so we can click on them and they actually um, lead us to a page which we need to generate. Okay, so let's start thinking about that. So um, I did a little bit of research and um, we need to start thinking about the kind of life cycle um, of uh, a Gatsby uh, site. Um, and we need to, um, we need to leverage um, the Gatsby API, particularly the Gatsby node API. So I've got a page, uh, a page up here where we've got the Gatsby API reference documents here. Um, and we've got uh, the Gatsby node APIs. So, um, so what says the Gatsby gives plugins and site builders uh, many APIs for controlling your site's data in the GraphQL layer. So what we want to do to start with is create some kind of friendly URL uh, for our new pages which we're going to create. Um, So uh, when when Gatsby first kind of processes all the files in our project, it's going to go through and create some nodes. These are GraphQL nodes. And if you remember, when we go look at, at our GraphQL code, uh, for example, over here, you can see we have edges and then nodes. So ed many edges contain nodes. So um, we actually want to see what it's doing when it's creating these nodes. Uh, and there's a create on create node event. Yeah. Okay, so um, the, it's called when a new node is created, and if we want to kind of work on those nodes, add stuff in when those nodes get get created, this is this is kind of the um, the life cycle event that we want to want to use, and you can see it's um it's this um, uh, exports on create node now this lives in the gatsby-node.js file and you might remember we had one of those earlier on um, when we were running to the in the very first stream we ran into a lot of problems with uh, versions of webpack and I was able to get rid of the gatsby node file so this is when it comes back so let's create that file first so that's going to live um, Gatsby node.js. So let's go and get that code that, um, that was suggested to us uh, here. All that in on create node. And we'll just drop that in place. Okay. So we've got two things. We've got the node that's going to get created, and we've got something called actions, which are the kind of things we can do with the um, with that node. Um, uh, and here we're pulling out a uh, create node field, etc. So this is um, these are the actions we can we can use. What I want to do is get rid of that um, temporary co that comment code there. Let's just see what we can actually see when we do this. So if let's do a console dot log and let's just um, and then we'll use we'll use some um, 
we'll use some uh, string interpolation here. So let's say, let's have, make this visible. A bunch of uh, chevrons, then we'll say um, created node of type. And then we'll have uh, the syntax for um, string interpolation in JavaScript. And in, under node, which is what which is this thing here, this node, which we have is being passed in, we can get um, we can get from there, we can get node internal dot type. So it's going to be the type of node that gets that's been created. We need to move that semicolon out there. Okay. So all we're going to do is on the creation of a node, we're going to just kind of send out to the log the type of node, the internal data type of the node that's been created. Field stable says, so here's a team, here's a team question. We've got a new guy that in your opinion struggles a bit, being able to solve issues on his own. Trying to mentor him on problem solving, perhaps using experience to share. Um, I've come across this situation a number of times. Um, and I think all you can do is is try to de when you when you're doing your mentoring, is take a problem and demonstrate a way of solving it, a, a, a kind of a technique or a strategy for tackling um, that particular problem, and then try to kind of talk to him in kind of general terms, like um, being things like googling things, Stack Overflow, obviously. But you need to be able to phrase your questions correctly and that's often the hardest thing you can't just google any old thing as you know so you've got to know what basically know what keywords are going to help you and be able to recognize an answer so i, I think that the, my approach in those cases is um is to demonstrate sitting sitting down with them a problem solving technique um the biggest problem that i have is not with people who um struggle solving problems but they run down rabbit holes um, when trying to fix a problem or solve a problem so they're constantly trying different things many of which are got, aren't really um, applicable so they, they don't aren't simply able to recognize a good strategy or a good solution and they're constantly trying things um, it, it's a hard one really break down a problem to soluble that's right so you need to you, they need a strategy so um, it's really as you say it's about breaking your problem down um, and once you can get that strategy in and demonstrate it a couple of times and then maybe even give them a manufactured problem to solve which you know the answers to uh, and you know the kind of best best route through ask them sit there and ask them to solve the problem um, being kind of um, supportive along the way and kind of making good kind of um, Good noises when when they're on the right track, and um, and kind of cautious noises when they're not. Uh, it's a matter of trying to guide people, as I say, into a, into a, a mindset of problem solving. Um, being being a streamer, um, you have to have that kind of that way of doing stuff, that, that kind of idea. Um, it's very hard streaming because oftentimes you you can't solve the problem on stream, but five minutes after you shut the stream down. The, the problem kind of solves itself other times you need time for your subconscious to work and it's very hard to teach people how to pro solve problems by not thinking about the problem um, I think you can get far too focused on an issue on a problem and never ever see the wood for the trees unless you stop thinking about it um, and it's quite hard to get people to do that um, I've had I, I, I used to have this practice of keeping a notepad by my bedside because what would happen, I'd wake up in the middle of the night or in the early hours of the morning and I would have a solution, I'd write it down. Um, nine times out of ten it's the right solution or at least puts you on the path to the right solution. Sometimes it's complete garbage because you would, I don't know, you'd had too much to drink the night before or something but a lot of the time, um, a lot of the time it is right. You need time for your subconscious to work on things. Yeah, there are. I mean, there are prob problem-solving strategies and techniques. Uh, I don't know if there's anything on the internet in terms of kind of training courses about it. So, Waz, 
Thank you. Welcome to the stream. See, what, what can help is to help people to do other, other stuff for a while. Yeah, so you need to do something. If you're really, really stuck, you need to kind of go away and do something else. Um, yeah, uh, it, it happens all the time with me. Is that I, I, I'm, I'm known at work as being a very cautious estimator. So I will very much overestimate times to do things uh, because I can't instantly think of the solution. Um, but very often, um, just going away, um, doing something else, you'll come up with a way of doing it, which is kind of half, in half the time. Um, so that's kind of my advice: is, is to is to do another task, is to come up with some easy strategies for solving the issues. Um, and they need they need good Google skills. Um, they need to be able to filter out stuff. Um, filter out stuff from Stack Overflow especially because you, there's, you get so much conflicting advice on, on those kind of sites. So learn to recognize um, good contributors on there in your, your area. If you see something by John Skeet, for example, you're going you're to take notice. Um, and maybe you can start contributing to things like that. Um, the other thing they can do is to, when they, when they solve problems, is write a blog post about it and get used to kind of exp explaining um, the way a problem can be solved. Um, I've not done an awful lot of way of blog posts myself. I did some on, on Dynamics 365 uh, some, some years ago, but I'm hoping this site will get me into doing some kind of blogs. But yeah, that's all I can suggest to your snowball, is, um, is, is look at um, simple strategies and also encourage for really difficult ones, really difficult problems where there isn't a you know, simple solution, um, the concept of not thinking about them. <laughs> not ignoring them, but just not thinking about them. Okay, so, well, so we need to stop our um, development uh, server here because what we, oh, there's a, there's a, um, there's a Gatsby CLI update there. Look, I'm going to make a note of that. 2.10.2. Do that off stream. Okay. Um, in fact, we'll do it now. Why don't we do it now? Oops. We'll just type it in npm store minus g. I'll take it a while right um what we're going to do we've stopped the development uh, server i'm going to restart the developer ser server so it should then rebuild our site and we should get some output from that console.log so gatsby develop uh, what have we got we got some errors and the five module progress bar well, i hope updating that uh, gatsby cli wasn't a bad idea I think it was, wasn't it? Um, that's, that's fantastic, isn't it? Module not found. Okay, well, let's go back. So that was um, 2102. And if we were on we we're on two nine zero, let's go back to two nine zero, see if that fixes our issue. That's the there's perils of doing an update and upgrade on, on stream. Shouldn't have done it, but there we go. Let's see if our development how it works now. So we make a note not to do that. Okay, so we've now got our um, output from um, from that console log. We'll just let it build the site, and then we'll go back and have a look. Okay, there we are. So what we've done, we've added that console.log into the uh, onnode create event, and you can see it's creating various types 
of um, of nodes, so a, a site page, a site plugin, loads of those, a site, a directory, a file, and then we've got Markdown Remark, and we've got two of those. We've got, uh, and they're preceded by a file, and then we've got a GraphQL source. Okay, so the interesting thing here is this Markdown Remark. Those are our blog posts. So that's what we want to kind of key on. So Markdown Remark. Is the, is the type we're after. Okay, so let's stop our server again and then go and have a look at the code. Okay, so um, in here, what we can do, we can say um, something like, I don't know, uh, if uh, node.turnal Type is equal to um, markdown remark. And then we can output that console log. Let's just make sure that is going to work. So we should now get two two nodes created. We can see them here, and created node of type markdown remark uh, twice, which is what we wanted to prove would happen. So that's good. Okay, I'll just cancel that again. Okay, so what we want to do now is create a field, a, a GraphQL field, which we'll be able to then use in our, our GraphQL query um, when we're going through the the markdown files so and we only want to do that um, when um, the node internal type is a markdown remark so we, we kind of got that, that working so let's oops I don't know why I'm always doing that kind of thing there we go okay so let's think about what we need to do we need to be able to, to create a file path and Within our plugin, uh, plugin eco, eco ecology that we've got, uh, we've got um, package.json here. We've got, um, sorry, our plugins is in the config here. We've got the Gatsby source file system plugin working, uh, and that will give us um, a create a create file path um, function. So we need to make sure we can get that, and uh, we need to we need to kind of import it, but we can't use we can't really use the ES um, ES6 syntax for import. So we're going to need to um, actually use a require here. So let's set a constant, which is going to be create file path. That's the function we want, and that is we're going to use require here. And um, it was Gatsby source file system. Source file system. And that's the plugin where we're going to get that function from. Okay. Having got that, um, uh, what's the best? course of action here. Um, I don't think we want to grab that just yet. So uh, if we've got the markdown type, then from the actions uh, we can grab the create file path. Uh, the create node field. So that was what we want, create node field. That one there. Okay, so once we've got that um, we want to create um, this kind of friendly URL or permalink, or whatever we'll call it permalink. There's another word for it, I think, in, in web development, which is slug, but I think of slug as being quite slimy, kind of mollusk like creature. I don't quite like it. So let's create a permalink. 
and that's going to be the result of calling create node field. Okay, and we need to pass a destructured object into there. Okay, so what do we need to pass in? Well, we're going to need to pass the node, and we need to pass in um, a function called get node, which is um, as it, as it sounds, it's what gets the actual node value itself. And then we're going to have a, a path. So we need to tell um, tell this create node field um, function where the markdown files live, and they live in our um, our hosts directory. Here they are. Look, so close the components down. They live in the post directory, so that's what we're going to set the base path to. So, base path is going to be uh, posts like that. Okay. So this needs to be create file path, I think file path because we're after the file path so the next part is where we do the create node so create node field now node field and into there we're going to pass the values to create the node field so this is going to create a graphql node for us um so we want the node itself we want to give the, the node a name. And this is going to be uh, permalink, we said, wasn't it? Permalink. And then we need to pass in the actual value of that, which would be permalink on the function above. It's not happy with that, is it? Oh, I see. I need to be creating an object here. That's why. So we need to close that off. So there we are. Okay. So what we're doing here. Um, comma missing. Create perma link nodes in GraphQL. So we'll save that. Um, we'll run our app. Can be developed. an error so let's try and fix that error so it's saying we haven't pulled out get node anywhere which is what I forgot to do okay so get node we need to go and grab that get node is going to be um, going to be here it gets passed in that's better so uh, create node we're not using create node at the moment let's we're not using let's not pull it out of actions we'll save that Again. hopefully we won't, that won't throw an error now that looks happy Okay, so now we're going to go to the, the, the graphical environment, the graph, the GraphQL um, kind of playground. So, Fuel Snowball, you've been inter interviewing students for the internship. That's good. You're also uh, at the end, uh, at the end, giving uh, the students 
some meta interview and describing how uh, how you see the purpose of interviews and what to think about the future. A lot of in interview internship. Yeah, um, there's a there's a guy who um, on my Discord who uh, who's gone for an interview today. I, I must um, actually ask him how he's got on. He's going for his I think it's his I think it's his second dev job. He was trying to he was trying to kind of go up in the world. His current um, company was kind of holding him back trying to better himself so he was asking for some interview advice yesterday so I think my advice for him he was asking about competency based questions and um, rather than actually answering his question I said I said it's like nine o'clock in the evening you need to chill out <laughs> and not worry about your interview and then just go in uh, go into your interview and um, express yourself as a you know, as a kind of a, a, a keen a keen developer willing to learn and ask some good questions at the end and just try to enjoy yourself um, I don't think I've ever had an interview I've been really uncomfortable with um, I've always can't try to go in with an attitude of wanting to enjoy the interview and with the attitude that I'm interviewing the company as much as they're interviewing me so I think it's important okay so let's let's go over to so we've got our, um, our GraphQL playground um, URLs here, so it's three underscores GraphQL. So let's go and have a look at that and see what we can see. Let's see. Do you think a local host? Yes. Yeah. So here's our explorer. Uh, so this is the query we were using to get the the kind of the front matter. And all the information about the, um, the markdown. So here's our permalink under fields. Okay, so that's worked nicely. So we, we've actually managed to pull that out. So what the permalink should do is let's let's run it and see what happens. Okay, so the permalink is working. So it's actually using the markdown file name. And creating our friendly URL, so we're going to be we're going to be creating a page at slash welcome and slash another post, and those are the titles of my markdown files. That's worked quite nicely. So what we need to do is come to grab this piece of code here. Brendonius, thank you for the subscription. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you. <laughs> wow, that's a, that's an honour. Thank you very much for that. That's um. Uh, I'm chuffed, so thank you. Yeah, so we're um, we're in the middle. Uh, we're doing some GraphQL, which um, you know I like, um, and we're uh, we're working on Gatsby, working on a portfolio website in Gatsby, um, using uh, some GraphQL. So what we're doing at the moment is um, working on a, a blog page, and um, what we're trying to do is to um, create the pages for the blog posts themselves programmatically at build time so yeah that's what we're doing so um, we're just playing around currently with um, with uh, the life cycle events of a, a Gatsby site so I've just grabbed these this field permalink field here and uh, we're going to get that and we're going to go over into our log post here and where was it I did it live again. Oops. Not that one. That one. So it lived at the same level as front matter. If we drop that in there, we've now got a permalink. Okay, save that. Right, so we need to pass that, that link in. So here we are creating, we, we're using this map function here to create all the blog post summary cards. And as you remember, the kind of objective we're trying to do here is when we click on this, the, the summary card, it, it needs to kind of take us to a new page. So let's have um, two property, and that's going to be, um, that's going to be node.fields. Link. A lowercase p. That's 
node is here, and then fields and then permalink. Right. Okay. That. And then in our actual blog post card, we need to kind of wrap the whole thing in a link, don't we? So uh, let's import import um, link component from Gatsby. I've seen this before, and then we're going to wrap the whole of this in a link. See how this actually works. Wrap the whole article in a link and then do it's going to be equal to props. Have a look at what effect that has had if any if we compiled okay looks like we've built okay let's refresh i can see oh, if we go if you look down in the bottom there as i hover over this card it, it moves up slightly but down in the you can barely read it in the bottom corner bottom left hand corner we've got low close 8000 slash welcome and here we've got another post so that seems to have worked well. Interesting that these are no longer in the right order though. Welcome should really come before, but I think it might be fairly random there because they're both the 8th of March. And what I'll go and do is change another post, I think, to be um, a different date, that's the 9th of March. Let's go and try that. I want to make sure that order is in, um, is in the, uh, the date descending order. Okay, so let's go into our another post here and we'll set that to be the ninth. I don't know if that will recompile. Yes, it did. So it recompiled at that point. Uh, if we go over here now, and so another post now is in the correct place, the 9th of March. Okay, so obviously when we click on it, we go to our uh, 404 page because we haven't yet created the actual um, page itself. That's the next page. Okay. Right, so um, let's close that off. So now we need to go back into our, our node. So now we want to look at creating um, pages. So, so I'm going to create um, pages programmatically at build time. Okay. So we, now we need to look at create pages. So this is um, where we need to go back to the Gatsby documentation again. So we need to actually create pages ourselves, don't we? Okay. So create pages, that's what we want. Okay, so let's have a look. So uh, it tells a plugin to add pages, which is what we want to do. The extension point is called after the initial sourcing and transformation of nodes, plus the creation of the GraphQL schema. So we've done the creation of the nodes, we've created our schema. So we can query the we can, we can now query the GraphQL schema in order to do the um, create pages. Okay, so we require a path, so let's get this P 
piece of code in there first. This is where this documentation is, is so helpful. So we've got that requirement. Galaxy streaming because <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's very difficult, isn't it? I know. I know that Gareth has, um, has recently started streaming um, um, after a little bit of a hiatus, and he streams from eight o'clock, I believe. But I do like to watch his streams, and he was going to do a um, a CPU emulation in F sharp, which I was very interested. In. So I hope he's going to do that. I think he's working on his um, on his tournament system in F sharp at the moment, but. Um, <laughs> I do want to watch his, uh, his emulation in F sharp because I think that's going to be fascinating. Okay, um, well, do feel free. I'm going to do this. Hi, Chris Jones. Welcome to the, to the stream. Good to see you. So uh, yeah, don't don't feel obliged to stay here if you want to go and watch Gamma. Fine. Um, okay, so let's go and check out again. So okay, so we're going to export, craft, create pages. We're going to do these things. Uh, we're going to get temp. This is actually pretty much what we want to do, isn't it? So let's let's start. So exports create page graph, and then grab create page out of the actions. Okay, that's what we'll do. Your Lord the code base alpha. We well, can also also have two two monitors and and, and watch both of them. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Though. That's very really kind of you. You're saying, well, okay. So um, we'll get, once again, we're doing the exports, and we're exporting um, create pages. Okay, and let's go back. This is my memory is so bad I can't see. But so we're going to pull out uh, in the arrow function. We're going to pull out. Um, GraphQL and Actions. Okay. So, um, GraphQL. And actions. Uh, and then we're going to get create page. We're going to deconstruct the create page function out of the actions that get passed in. Let's grab that path. Okay. So this is going to be asynchronous. This is an asynchronous process. So, um, we want this we got, because we're in this um, this arrow function. We've got to return something. So let's return something there. We we'll return a promise, and the promise uh, we need to provide a resolver like that. And our function is going to be first thing we need a GraphQL query. So we've got GraphQL here, so this is available to us. So GraphQL, um, and then we want our back ticks. And remember the back ticks of GraphQL. So what do we want to do? We just want to get those those um, those permalinks. So that was up here. Um, so we can pretty much grab all of that. Uh, and drop that into here. We don't need the whole thing. We just basically need that part of it. Do Just the 
fields of permalink, we don't need total count. So let's just pull this. So we get um, post links permalinks. That's just a name. Um, I don't believe we're going to need to um, sort it, so we can get rid of. So let's just test that by dropping that into GraphQL. And get here our GraphQL. Pop that piece of code in. Run it. And we do get what we want. So we get our permalinks out that way. Okay. Aeon's End, Atlantis Rising, Chronicles of Crime and, and Cracks of Q. So Aeon's End, I did look at that card game, um, looks interesting, I don't know if I'll have anyone to play it, but you did say it was a one player, if it's a, if it's a one player game, I'll be more interesting. Gloom, Gloomhaven is A, huge, B, very expensive, and I'd have actually no one to play play with. I've, I have great difficulty finding people to play board games with, much easier for role playing games, um, tabletop role playing games, but I've got a whole stack, I think I've I think I sent on, onto um, one of the discords a photograph of more of my board games. I'm looking at them now, and I can count on the on the fingers of one hand how many times I've played these things um, with my family. So it's very difficult. <laughs> but I, I love uh, Gloomhaven. Looks uh, the production quality of that looks very good. Okay. So we've got our. Um, We've got our GraphQL, um, and then we've got we, after we've run that GraphQL, we want to get the result. So we do a dot then for the once the promises, um, the asynchronous promise has uh, returned. So let's drop another. So the result is going to be um, the result of our GraphQL. Let's go and have a look again of what the result looked like. So it was it was data, data or markdown remark edges and then node. So edges was a um, an array and then node. Okay, so let's see if we can remember that. So it's result dot data uh, result dot data dot edges. And then we want to loop through all of the uh, edges that we brought back. Benoni says that's the challenge of getting them, getting them to the table, yeah. Especially, I, I don't know what the kind of gameplay is like um, for Gloomhaven. If it's hard to learn, really need um, simple fast mechanics. Um, which is why I think like 221A ba B Baker Street is easy because it's a very easy game to play. Um, what else have I got? Runebound was okay, not too bad. Alien Frontiers is a good one. The Pandemic, uh, the most beautiful game ever invented, is is usually a good a good hit. Um, Betrayal Legacy, which we, we we are playing, very very good. So yeah, uh, Jenga. I've got Jenga on there as well. It's easy. Escape from Colditz, one of my favourite games from childhood. Very difficult to teach people to play that. So we want to do a for each loop now. Okay, um, so we want an arrow function now inside here. So um, now for each node that we pull back out of that for each, we want to do a function based on that. Uh, that's going to be in curly braces. So this is one of the hardest things I find in JavaScript is making sure I keep track of all my curly braces and my round brackets. Hopefully we're doing okay in that space. Okay, so what we're going to do then. Then we're going to create a page. We've pulled create page as, as a constant up here out of, um, out of the actions that get passed in. So it should be available to us. Create page. Uh, curly brace. 
we create obviously this is going to be an object okay so what do we want to create we want to create a path and we've pulled path in remember we got path up here So the path, oops, the path is going to be um, node dot fields dot permalink like that. Um, okay, so what we need to do now is actually tell it how to create that, um, how to create the page. Let's go and have a look at the documentation. We need to give it here. There's the path. We need to give it a component, which is a template, and then a context. Okay, so they they created a blog post template up here. So let's grab that piece of code, and we'll have a const blog post template up there. Uh, and we need to create a directory, don't we, where we're going to put our templates. Um, call our template posting.js and then up in source new folder called templates and in there we'll create a new file called posting.js and we'll go and look at that in a minute Um, put a dot slash in to make sure we're, we're okay with that. Hmm. Okay, we might have trouble finding it, let's make sure we do. Uh, and then there was a context. The context is going to be an object. Optional context data to be inserted as properties. So we want we want we want the the permalink to be sent to our to our blog post template, don't we? Let's in there say uh, permalink. That's going to be uh, node dot fields dot permalink. Okay. So let's just step through this and make sure it looks reasonable. We've pulled out create page from the actions that get passed in. We've also passing in a, an instance of GraphQL. Our uh, template, and uh, we're going to need to work on that in a second. Posting.js. Chronicles of Crime was interesting app integration. I'm not I'm not convinced by games which have apps, I must admit. If you're stable. I've been largely tempted by um the the Middle Earth, the, the Lord of the Rings game that's got an app integration in it and I just worry that it's um, one of those things which after a while the app will stop working and not be maintained and Mansions of Madness 2, yes, yeah, so, so I believe this Lord of the Rings game is very much based on Mansions of, Mad Mansions of Madness 2, or 2nd edition. I think it's the same mechanics, except um, translated to kind of Middle Earth. So, interesting that you say that, so you, it works well, does it? Bizarre. If, I, if, um, if the UK Games Expo actually manages to, to take place this year with, with the kind of virus thing going on, then it's kind of the back of my mind that I might buy it, but I need to be convinced, I need to play it. 
I think the ideal place to go and, and, and play it and be taught how to play it. Okay, so then we so we got so we get our um, we know this query works. It brings back all of our permalinks, and then we pass those results in for each of those. When that when the promise returns, the asynchronous call returns, then we uh, process that result for each of the, of the edges that come back. We have a node, uh, uh, and we create a page path will be slash welcome slash another post whatever the component is going to be our blog post template and we're going to pass into that we're going to make available to the blog post template that is um, our permalink prop okay that sounds reasonable unfortunately we can't test this until we've done something in terms of actually building a, um, a template so let's go and have a look at that Right, so we need to do our normal imports in here. So we'll import React. We should have this under a quick key or something like that, a snippet. Uh, we want going to want GraphQL. I'm going to pull that GraphQL out from Gatsby. Um, and then we're going to want to have some of our own components. Let's we'll leave that for the moment. Um, okay. So. Uh, best way of doing this. So we're going to say um, const posting. This is a template, so it's slightly different, isn't it? What's the best way of doing it? Let's just export defaults. And then what we can do is we can define an arrow function that way. So we're going to, some data going to come in of some thoughts. Uh, an arrow function. Curly braces there. And we're going to want to define um, a constant called post that's going to be equal to data dot marked how we mark isn't it that's I think I call it posting shall we oh I haven't got a return yet and then we're going to um, return uh, yeah, that's right there we go okay um, and then we need to turn some um, JSX here don't we so um, page needs to look pretty much like any other page so let's go and have a look at um, some of our pages so the blog page so we're gonna have a layout as a container blah, blah, blah. okay so let's just grab that little lot there'll be a drop that into there and then from uh, blog then we're gonna get these elements okay so we're going to get the container um, container component out of semantic UI react and we're going to get our layout and we don't that. okay so we're going to we've got a layout and we're going to live inside a container so that's our our, our uh, react our um, responsive container we're going to use okay so now so. 
I think the best way to do this. So let's just let's just pull out the text, shall we? Um, and have a look what we can get from our Fomanti. We don't want a card. We want a heading. Let's look at headings. The page header. We'll just get a H1. Um, this is going to be class name, UI header, and this is going to be the title that we'll be passing in. Um, data dot um, posting. get the title out for now okay um, so we also want a GraphQL query here so we can export a constant query and that's going to be GraphQL backtick that um and then we've got our query itself okay um okay so what's this got to do um this query has got to um go and look at all of our um go and look at all of our uh, permalinks that we've got and only pull the pull back the title and the HTML etc where the um, where the post the blog post the MD file front matter matches up with that um, that permalink. So let's go and have a look at modeling that. So what can we say? Get permalink. Um, get post get posting. So we want to look at all markdown pages, blah blah blah. Um, so we pass. What are we passing in? Passing in a markdown, markdown remark, and that's going to have clearly. That's going to have markdown remark. It's going to have some HTML. Some HTML. We want. We want the front matter title and tags in the and the date. We want all those. Um, uh, but we want to constrain this now, don't we? So um, don't need that. What we want to say is that um, the query got to be constrained. 
So what we want, so we've got a field, don't we? So we want uh, permalink. Value we're going to pass in. Uh, that's the wrong place for that. That needs to go. Yeah. Better. And we have a we'd have a var here, a variable, which we haven't defined. So query variables. Um, God, I can't remember how to do that bit. few months since we last dealt with um, working with uh, GraphQL. Amazing how quickly you forget. Uh, so. so this is how they're defining it like that. Have to define it as being a string. Um, Um, forgetting that so they haven't got 
curly braces around it in that example. Oh, come on, GraphQL, you've... Oh, here we are. So, username, colon... it's pretty close though so because we all we want to use is string interpolation to pop that value in there so um, let's oh. um, let's try something slightly different let's try something slightly different so I think we need to define our variables here don't we so we're going to say dollar permalink is a string and it's required. I think it's coming back to me now. And then we say fields permalink. We don't need to have that. And a comma. We got too many of these.
so we need to provide that now we need to provide in our query variables down here the actual so now we're going to say that permalink that's better we get some telesense now and um, we're going to say that it's going to be equal welcome like that and there we get the HTML that's better wow okay that was a struggle okay so now we've got our query get posting so that was that was real time struggling to remember stuff. Copper Cop Beauty, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. So your samples are not so weird about app stopping work working. So we, we're boomers, so we're skeptical about yes, newfangled app stuff. Board games with new with with apps. How can it possibly last? It's like board games that need batteries, isn't it? They never lasted. Okay, so we've got our GraphQL now after that bit of struggle so now we can try and pop that into our code so that's going to go into there um, so why is it unhappy about that Cons, that's why. There we go. Let's save that. So let's just read over what we know. We're just going to put in the last name. Just to put the header, the front matter title. We're getting the front matter title out of here. We're also going to have the date and all the uh, tags and things are going to be on there. Okay. Good. Right. Um, So get posting failed to compile. Unexpected name get posting. Okay, we can just get rid of get posting. Um, Compiled. It's compiled this time. Okay. So in theory, I'll click on that and we get still get a still get today. Oh, we got a build. That's why. Okay, so we've got to stop our development server and we've got to do a build because we're creating these at build time. So it's dynamic, programmatic creation of files, but only when we build. The correct pages are the failure, there, isn't it? Look. GraphQL is not a function. Okay, what have I done wrong there, I wonder? So it's our on on page create. Okay, let's stop that. Let's get another look at that. So we're in node here. Hmm. Well, I think we are missing mapping all that in. Um, oh, this 
some back tick over that. Let's try running that and see what happens. like it. GraphQL. GraphQL query and the non-page component will not be run. Right, so we're trying to create pages in our Gatsby node, you're absolutely right. Um, interesting. What's wrong with it? This is always going to be fairly challenging. Ah, oh, if we haven't resolved, we haven't done the resolve. So we need to do a resolve, uh, and it's going to be there. We need to actually call resolve. We've defined it there, and we never called it. Okay. Let's see what if that's happier. Hmm, yeah, it still failed. But it's still saying that Ga GraphQL is not a function. This is very similar. Hmm. Why is that? Why is that not happy? Um. So, we are returning a new promise. We call it GraphQL. Okay, let's look again. We've obviously made some elementary error here. So, uh, okay, so we're getting, we're defining resolve. With another function. We call GraphQL. Okay. Or markdown remark is correct. Then edges, then node, then fields, then permalink. that down here so one two three four five one two three four five we close everything off correctly uh, we forgot to close some oh, there's the closing bracket that bracket there should line up with that one one two one
to find so I'm confused why it's saying it's not a function Here's this example. So I guess we could try not using it, try it not having a promise. It is a promise anyway. So that okay. So let's try it this way then, without an a promise. So return, we're simply returning GraphQL. So let's see if we can do the same. So return. Now let's have a closer look at that. Okay, so we're not going to return. We're going to return GraphQL like that, and that means we lose not a bracket. So now it's saying return GraphQL, and then we close that and do a then, then result. Let's pinch that bit of the promise there. Right, well, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the whole lot and then I'm going to adjust it in our code. Um, So we're going to replace that query that they've got with our query. Processing of results, our processing of results. This bit here. Right, see if that makes any difference whatsoever. I'm kind of struggling to see the difference. And we don't want a limit.
exactly what happens with that. Yeah, it fails as well. Have we not? Hmm. Enough cures coming in here, the option is. So we're doing the same thing as we were before. And that's not a function. Query whatever data you want to create pages for front bubble. Let's say it looks okay. You've been working every copy beardy. Sorry, I'm 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 not paying due attention to chat at the moment because this is bugging me to be honest. Because as far as I can see, my code so I've obviously made some elementary errors. Let's go through it again. So Exports create pages. Passing in GraphQL and action. We're pulling create page out of action. We set up a. It's not as simple as that, is it? We need those semicolons. Um, let's just try it just in case. It would be annoying if it was that, but I don't think it is. GraphQL is not a function. Oh, I beg to differ. It is a function. works okay. Hmm. 
Or is it now? Oh, because we're not running, that's why. This doesn't have. This doesn't have. Um, No. This curly bracket is this um, bracket here, isn't it? Okay, that's interesting. Once again, we're going to copy the whole lot. Notice there's a weird um, fix there, so let's put that. Like that. Let's use their code. So, um, so it's not that the actual thing we want is let's use node fields. permalink and leave their limit of a thousand in there and then we want to create that create page We're using example code directly from the page, uh, the documentation page for that. Pretty much what we want. Let's try it again then. Still failing. Hmm. 
Load field permalink is not defined. Make sure there's a typo somewhere. Okay. At least a different error this time. Big page. Oh, it's edge. Okay, so I can see what they've done there. They've defined edge and we've, we've defined node. So let's just go back to node. I'll save. And run the development server again. Let's hope this is going to sort you off. Nightling copy ready. See you, see you again soon. Hope to catch one of your streams soon. Only again, look. I can't read property permalink of undefined. So now we got a different error, which is fun, isn't it? Data all mark all mark down the mark edges node fields permalink bang there it is undefined we take our results for each of them run through, create page, path is going to be there, node fields, permalink, correct, blog post template, that, one thing, permalink, node fields, permalink. So they're using something different here, look, aren't they? The path. Let's try what they're using. So that be... Oh. seems to have run this time. 
So is string interpolation the answer? Okay, well let's go and see what's happened. So here's our post. Let's go click on that. And we've gone cannot read property front matter undefined. Okay, so we've got somewhere. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So we, we've been sent to the welcome page and it looks like the build of the page didn't quite work. Okay. So. So we've come to here and we're trying to pass posting. I think that needs to be a lowercase m, doesn't it? Mark down remark. Let's give that a go. We need to stop it again. Rebuild. Stressful this stuff, isn't it? This was always going to be a tricky, tricky stream to pull off, though. This one because this is um, probably the most difficult part. There we've hit welcome. There we did it. Look. Okay, so let's go back to the blog and click on there, and we get welcome. Click on blog here, we get another post. Okay, we've got it. We've got it. Oof. Okay. So now we can work on styling up the blog post. Not quite sure about these images. I'm not sure what that's got to do with anything, but we'll, we'll sort that out later. Okay. Um, so in here we've got container, we've got heading, and now we want to have um, the actual HTML itself, don't we? So we're going to have to kind of fiddle with the um, inner HTML or something, aren't we? So we're going to want um, we're going to want a div like that. Um, how do we how do we change the in h in a HTML in Gatsby? Search. Um, HTML. And we react. Oh yeah, react set HTML in HTML versus dangerously set in it. In okay, this is what we want. So, um, it says here that you should sanitize your data if it's coming from an external source, but we know that our HTML is coming for our own markdown files and it's created statically so we're not we haven't got to worry about sanitizing it because we're under we're under control nobody can inject HTML into it so dangerously set in a HTML we want so let's go and have a look at that so in our div here we want to dangerously set this HTML and that's going to equal um, that's going to be the H yeah, underscore underscore HTML. Um, that's going to be um, posting the HTML.
the width. Should we put the HTML back? Build, I think it did. Yeah, there it is. So uh, we've got. So we don't need to have a title. Talking this. So I think what we'll do is just remove that, um, that text there. Okay, well, that's pretty much what we wanted to do. Let's just go kind of fiddle with the, um, the actual. Post itself. So welcome. We don't not need to have that, that, and another post. It's just Lorem Ipsum, so that's fine. Um, okay, there we are. Better. Got our links. So I think that's good enough for now. Um, and it should be in a responsive container, so we should be able to just go around with it nicely. Yeah. Um, so we can go back to our blog and we can click that and we get our lorem ipsum. Wow, that was a struggle. But it was always going to be that Gatsby node code that was going to be the hard bit. Let's go and have a quick look at it again. Gatsby node. So I don't quite understand why my first attempt didn't work, but it looks like it was... It was something in this area with our GraphQL. And then we had to use... Um, String interpolation, JavaScript string inter interpolation in here, so but uh, that's that's okay. Um, okay, I think what I'm going to do at that point, I'm going to um, I'm going to get add that um, git commit on this end creation. Blog post pages. I'm going to get push that, and we'll look at the final part of what I want to do. Really, is to have a look at um, have a look at Netlify forms. We may just make a start on this. I just I think that's all I wanted to do in terms of the blog posts. We'll do some styling on it next time. Okay, well let's start up uh, Gatsby Developer again. Okay, so we've got a contact page which we haven't written yet and we want to put a contact form on there. Um, so let's have a look at doing that. The basics of a contact form to begin with. Okay, so We need a new page. Contact.js. And it's going to look very much like this. got a container we're gonna put our form inside the container um, we've got something called intro yeah, a component called intro which has um, has social in it look okay so I think what I'm going to do we'll, and we'll split this up into um, into components in a while. What I'm going to do is grab all of that, go into our contacts, 
we're gonna in our container we're gonna pop in that we're gonna put contact me in there we don't need our emoji of that and then we'll have a two we'll have a stackable grid we'll have our placeholder text and then social and that grid is there okay so then we're going to have another div there we're going to put our form here that um, and then in our header and we're going to link to contact here that's compiled okay that's failed social is not defined because it didn't bring social in so here we need to Contact, we need to bring social in. Okay, we save that. Now it's happy. And so now if we go to contact, we get our introductory text, we get our social we can put a contact form here okay. okay that's good and uh, we'll put a um, break in there I think um, okay so we don't really need a uh, we don't need this placeholder. What we'll do is simply say um, we'll put a paragraph in there, which will say something like um, contact me using the social media buttons or fill in a fill in the contact form below we'll put a bit more blurb in that in a minute Okay, so now we need a form. So what we're going to do is we'll just build everything in within this. Um, we'll build everything within this page. This needs to be a contact page. Index page. Like that. Okay. And now we need a form, so uh, we'll have a form. I wonder what we've got in the way of forms on semantic. Form. Here we go. So let's. Let's 
going to go replace the platform. Interesting. What's he unhappy about? Um, oh, it's going to be the class thing. And get it to work. Uh, keep forgetting when we cut and paste, we've got to change these to class name. That's not sold it. We don't need a we'll put that in a second. Um about that one there. Corresponding JSX closing tax for div.
see what it looks like. We can put placeholder in there, do you think? Let's have a look. So there we've got the basics of a form. We need a submit button there, don't we? So now we need to go and have a look at the documentation for Netlify. Um, so Netlify forms is what we want. Netlify. Uh, we want documentation and we want forms. So setup. So Netlify comes with built-in form handling. Our build bots do it by passing your HTML files directly at deploy time, so there's no need to make an API call or use JavaScript. So we need to add a tag data Netlify equals true on the form tag. So method name contact method post data Netlify is true. And that. Form name is contact post data netlify is true. Got that bit. What else does it say? go to the documentation that doesn't seem to be enough documentation there we are okay spam filters all form submissions filtered using acismet industry leader in spam detection good so I guess we get um, ridiculous email addresses it'll it'll do that so we can have, also have a honeypot and use recapture we'll use both of those things so honeypot field these are hidden fields which lure bots into completing the field that humans can't see so we want to do that so we need to create a hidden field and set notify honeypot to the name of that field so let's Add a bit of code there. That would be a bit of code there. Um, there.
Um, just name it hidden. And then we want to notify data. So that's notified from the pot. Data notified any pot I suspect. So what we're going to do is build that, see that build, and make sure that that be problems. Form label must be associated with the control. Form label must be associated with the control. Okay, I'm not sure what that means. HTML form label. It's for label for. Okay, fair enough. Build that to make sure it is happy. We can't tell. All levels be saved with the control. I thought I'd done that. Oh, it was an ID. This still throws those lint errors, I'll just sort them out of stream. Mm. A form label must be associated with the control. Hmm. to do here is to check that the HTML looks okay. Oh, I'm good at it. Ah, some, I've got some classes instead of class names. Oh, class name, there. Class name. Let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at this HTML. That's not hidden for a start, is it? So 
So notify, data notify honeypot, that's there. So that's, that was what we wanted to see. Didn't want it to get rid of the honeypot field. So why isn't it hidden? Let's go and have a look at romantic. Um, I think about hidden fields in here. interesting look it's placeholder is relevant for next area well, we'll use that um, hidden fields hidden fields Where we got to search you know. Fermenting hasn't got to make Blue Barn, thank you very much for the follow. Have some have some uh electric alf hype for that. Thank you so much. We're just working our way through a few uh minor issues. Trying to use um fermentic UI for um everything. So I just need to see if we can have hidden fields. Or if I have to define some CSS for it, I don't really want to do label. I wish there was a search. Um, hidden so let's just do that shall we let's not have a label let's see if we can get away with that so do that what that looks like That failed to compile. Ah. Better. So now we can't see that there, but it should still. Okay, so that's good. So there's the hidden input, hidden 
field there. Hmm. I've got a spelling mistake there, let's sort that out. Contact. Right, I think what we should do at this point is to submit that or push that up to Git and then see if um, we get for the form reacting within um, within Netlify. So let's just stop this here. Hit add. Git commit minus m added let me find the form push that so we've got some um, continuous delivery set up for this site now so if I go over to Netlify now and I go to uh, my overview and we go and refresh on that. So we're building. So this is really, really kind of um, cool. Everything about Netlify I really like. So all of these 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 builds are actually independent, they're atomic. And if I want to, if I kind of don't like the, this what I'm building now, assuming it publishes, I can actually just re actually publish a previous build and instantaneously um, it'll go up to the, uh, their CDN uh, across the world. So it's, um, it's really cool for um, kind of big projects like that where you obviously this is a, a little pet project, it's not so important. But uh, for, for big builds, if you kind of make a release and uh, you need to rapidly roll it back because there was a problem, it's very simple to do. Still takes a little while. So I'll I think what I'm gonna do is take a, just a very short break. Uh, bi biological break. Oh no, it's published, there we go. So there we are. Okay. So let's have a look. So we've got forms. We've got one form that's collecting data, and it's called contact, which is the form I've just created. So let's um Let's have a look what it says. So we want to add notifications. So we're going to want to have an email when we get a form that's filled in. So we'll add a notification. Oh look, we can have Slack integration, or we can integrate with a, a webhook somewhere. So that could be somewhere um, a, a, a serverless function in Azure or um, AWS something, or email. So we want email here. So um, new form submission. That'll be my email and any form, or the contact form. Okay, so we've set up email notifications. Uh, forms, let's now go to our app. So we actually want to go to the one that's not this one, this is our local. Let's go off to um, HTTPS, go on slash that's codebase alpha dot dev one that's on Netlify now. So this is our application. We're going to go to the contact. Uh, well, I'll just say SMB, shall we? Test. Uh, Test.com and Death message. Submit that. Okay, did that submit? Let's have a look. No valid submissions yet. Ok, 
Okay, so it didn't submit. So we got a honey. So it's read the thing. It honey pots there. Okay, that's interesting. No, I didn't. Didn't do it. Let's have a quick look. So. Method post, data netlify's true, so it's picked it up, it's picked up this, these values. We've got a submit button. That's interesting, isn't it? But we didn't get a validated submission. Be marked as spam. It's interesting. It, I expected it to, once you'd posted it to. setting an action of that um push that and while we wait for that to build I'm trying to get it to go away from the form it stayed on that form when I press submit which is not what I expected I expected it to move away from um, the submit from the form page it does seem to have got the oh doesn't it so if I F12 on here Is true. Net for honey pot set. Name is contact. It's picked it up. We've got the fields. I'm not sure about those IDs. That might be messing it up, I suppose. We got a submit button. That looks pretty much what it says we needed to do. Okay. We've published again now. Navigated away, but it's gone to somewhere we don't doesn't know about. Interesting. Um. Okay. So we're not getting any submissions. I think this is one to tackle off stream 
we've got the basics working. We've got a, um, a submission, a contact form registered, and it's just the details which I'm missing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover that in the next stream, I think, because uh, we know what quarter past, quarter past uh, ten. And I was planning to finish about ten o'clock. So, but we've we've got all that in um, up on GitHub. So, um, just so everyone knows, you can um, look at any of my code for any, any of the many many projects we've done on GitHub. Here's the GitHub um, the GitHub URL. Uh, feel free to go and look at that. Um, it's all uh, MIT licensed. Um, you can go and use the code whichever, whatever you, way, way you want. Up there, there's Alexa skill. There's um, a chatbot. There's a AI Microsoft AI chatbot as well. There's a synthesizer written in WPF and .NET Core. There's a whole bunch of stuff up there uh, just to interest you. There's also a Z80 emulator and a Spectrum 48K emulation up there. Um, so plenty and the loads of shaders as well pixel shaders if you're interested in that so fuel stable and I collaborate on some streams for to create pixel shaders there's a whole bunch of stuff up on github for you to play with if you wish uh, do um, check out my YouTube channel where all my videos are archived is the URL for my channel um, also you can um, contact me on discord if you wish to talk about any of the code that you find in the GitHub, um, do um, do check me out, check that out, and contact me if you have any questions or have any difficulty implementing any of the code. And my Twitter handle is there, so please do follow me on Twitter. Uh, I occasionally do um, extra streams. Currently, I'm constrained to one stream a week. But you never know, I might be able to find the time to do uh, extra pop-up ones. For example, tomorrow I might try and squeeze a, a short stream in to finish this piece of work off here. Other than that, let's go and find someone to raid, shall we? So I'll just move this off screen. And we'll find a raid to do. Hopefully we'll find someone interesting. To raid, so let's have a look who's available. We'll find something interesting. Let's have a look. Raid a channel. I think we're going to raid Gareth, aren't we? Of course we are. Let's do that. Let's go and look at some F sharp with Gareth Hubble. So I'll see you again, um, either maybe for a brief uh, stream tomorrow if if, uh, if able. Otherwise, um, I shall see you next week and we'll do some more Gatsby. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you then. Ready now.